Today, we're going to talk about Microsoft Teams webinars. This video is more about how you set up the meeting rather than how you conduct the meeting. With webinars, what you can do is you can allow people to sign up for your meeting rather than pushing out an attendees list. This is really useful for things like all hands meetings or training events. The scenario we're going to go over today is a training event that I am currently conducting at my job. I have opened a new meeting details pane and to create a webinar, I will go to the toolbar and where it says require registration none, click the drop down arrow and you can select for people in your organization or for everyone. If you select for everyone, this means that literally anyone on the internet who finds the link to this webinar can sign up. For people in your org means that the link will only work for people who belong to the same company or organization that you do. The best choice for my scenario is people in your organization. We're back at the new webinar details pane and at the top you see an option to view and customize your registration form. But before we do that, I'm going to fill out the webinar details by adding a title, the required presenters, the date, the time, and any other details as necessary. Now we're going to click view registration form so that we can customize what information the participants will submit. A new window will appear with a basic registration form. Now you have the option of uploading an image if you like. To get the best result, you'll want an image that's at least 918 by 120 pixels. This is the same pixel ratio that is used in Teams announcements. So I already have an image that I'm going to quickly grab from my computer and upload. And then you will need to add the event details to the registration page. Next, you will have the option to add a little bit of information about the speaker, such as their name and any bio information you want to include. You can add multiple speakers, but for this demonstration, we'll just stick with one. The basic information included on every registration form is first name, last name, and email address, but you can also add additional fields if you want to. When you click on add a field, you will see a list of things that you can add to the registration form. Ones that I use a lot are job title, organization, or custom question. When you select custom question, you have the option of an input question or a choice question. One of my favorites is to create a choice and then ask people how comfortable they currently feel with the software that I will be teaching. And then I'm going to choose to mark this as a required entry so that this will help me to tailor my session just a little bit more to the people who sign up. Now that I'm done creating my registration page, I can go ahead and save it. And it shows me a preview of what the page is going to look like for the people signing up. With the registration complete, I can go back to the new webinar details pane, add any additional information if I need to, and then click send. This will add an event to the organizer's calendar as well as anybody who was put in the presenter field. To demonstrate the registration process, I posted a message in Teams for my colleagues so that they could click a link and sign up. I have logged in as Adele and I'm going to go ahead and sign up for the OneDrive session. And because I set this to only internal people in my organization can register, the registration form is automatically pulling in Adele's first name, last name, and email address. So all she has to do is tell me what is her level of experience. Adele is an intermediate OneDrive user. Next, we're gonna click register now. Adele will get an email with the registration information. And if the event is about to start, you could click join event from this page. This event doesn't start until April. So Adele is going to want to locate the email in her inbox. And here you can see the date, the time, and a link to join the event. If you want, you can also cancel your registration. Now let's go back to the organizers view. I've opened the OneDrive webinar details and you can see that you have several tabs available that were not here before. Because somebody has registered for the info session, I can see this registration box down here. And if I click on it, it's going to open an Excel file, which I can find in my downloads folder. When you open the file, you can see how many people viewed your registration page and then who actually signed up. 
Back in Teams, you can go to the attendance dashboard and see similar information. You will not see anything related to the custom questions here. However, you will be able to see if there were any cancellations. The attendance dashboard will let you download the registration roster and then after the event, it will also let you download the attendance roster. Going back to the details tab, you can click on the three dots to see the current registration status. You can change it to none, but you can't switch to for everyone. If you did make a mistake, you're going to have to cancel your webinar and start all over. One thing that I did find a little bit odd about the team's webinar registration process is the organizer does not seem to have the ability to remove a person from the registration list if they signed up and they were not part of the intended audience. The only option seems to be to have that person cancel their registration. Even with that slight oddity, I still find this feature to be extremely useful. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Teams, please see the playlist that's on the screen now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.